Hey and welcome back. Uh, uh, this video is for discussing power analysis uh, in circuits and networks. So uh, we have a resistor uh, with a potential VT across it, and uh, simply power uh, delivered to the resistor is VT of uh, V square of T by R. And if uh, V is a time varying signal, we can uh, uh, introduce uh, average power, define average power. Uh, average PR is equal to uh, 1 by T time yeah, and integrate uh, the integrate the um, power V square of T by R over DT. Uh, and uh, where capital T is the time period of the um, periodic signal. And we'll get the average power uh, in one oscillation, in one period uh, of the signal. So this is where we introduce the root mean square uh, voltage. That is, we define VRMS is equal to square root 1 by capital T, integration 0 to T, uh, V square of T dt. So the application of VRMS uh, can be seen right from the average power which we derived for the resistor. That is, uh, it, it, uh, if VRMS uh, be applied to the resistor, uh, in this case, then this RMS square by R will directly give me the average power, average power delivered to the uh, resistor, that is in one time period. So if uh, we have a sinusoidal voltage, that is VP cos omega d plus phi, uh, the cos square term on integration will give half, and uh, VRMS will turn out to be the peak voltage VP uh, divided by square root 2. So VP by root 2 is the uh, RMS voltage for the sinusoidal signal here. And uh, based on that, let's try to analyze a general load. So uh, let's say a general uh, load having impedance Z has a VT uh, potential drop across it and current I of T. Now, uh, in phasors, it can be, V of T can be represented as V bar exponential J omega T and I bar exponential J omega T for current. What is power instantaneously at that instant. Well, power is actual current flowing through the load times actual potential drop across it. So average power will be uh, uh, small i of t, uh, small v of t dt, and integration 0 to t, 1 by t, to get the uh, average power over the time period. But what is uh, the actual current flowing through it? That is the real part of the phasor, the real part of the phasor. So that will be v bar exponential j omega t is real part. Uh, and real part is uh, z plus z bar by 2, uh, applying this property for voltage and current, and integrating on 0 to t, we'll get something like uh, this. That can be further simplified to half of real part of v bar i star. Note that v bar i star means that we are taking the phase difference with respect to voltage, the implication of which we'll see later. and this is the average power, the average power delivered to a load that will be half of real part V bar times I star. Now, uh, although that is uh, the actual power, we define a few more terms. That is uh, the first term being the complex power. Complex power is V bar I R star by two, the real part of which gives us the real average power. And uh, this is how we calculate power delivered to different loads. Let's say R, C, and L are different uh, circuits. So you can clearly see that average power delivered to the resistor will be VP square by 2R. For the capacitor and inductor, it will turn out to be a complex value, the, uh, meaning that there will be no real power delivered in a uh, in one time period, and so on. So continuing the same uh, discussion we have, V bar of the phasor, let's say it turns out to be VP uh, times exponential J phi. And for I, I bar the phasor turns out to be I, IP, the peak current times exponential J theta. So uh, the complex power P bar will be VP IP by 2 exponential uh, J phi minus theta. And uh, that will be reduced to cos uh, phi minus theta plus J sine phi minus theta. So this is the uh, complex average power. The modulus of this quantity is what we call the apparent power, that is VPIP by 2. 
the unit of this is uh, is uh, v dot a. We don't use watt here. Uh, watt is reserved for uh, the real power, the actual power delivered to the load. That is the real part of this complex power. That is VPIP by two cos phi minus theta. And this, as the unit, as I said, watt, and this is called the real power. Third uh, one being the imaginary part of this complex power, that is VPIP by two sine phi minus theta. Uh, this is what we call the reactive power, the unit again being VA or also represented as VAR as well. That is volt ampere and R stands for reactive. These are some terminologies that uh, we must be uh, very familiar and uh, remember. Uh, and the power factor is another term defined that is real part of the power delivered divided by the modulus of the power that is basically uh, cos phi minus theta, cosine of the phase difference. And uh, after having discussed this, there is one more small point that is in practical systems, uh, it is uh, it is required that uh, the effective impedance of any network be uh, real because when the mm, when the uh, power is being transmitted from la uh, large distances. Uh, having a reactance uh, in the effective impedance uh, makes uh, uh, makes the energy flow back and forth from the uh, source to the load, and this causes more transmission loss on the transmission lines, which the power supplier has to bear. So they do charge uh, some extra amount for this. So uh, to avoid that, we uh, use a capacitor or an inductor connected in parallel to the load that we have just to correct the net impedance so as to get a real impedance the real value a real impedance so that it acts as a resistor and just draws power this also means that i and v uh, will be in phase and the power factor will be one in an ideal case but in practice uh, it is uh, it, it is tried to get the power factor as close to one as possible. OK, so coming back to the maximum power theorem that we discussed for DC and resistors, uh, in a complex case, what happens is the, um, let's say we have uh, V bar uh, as the phasor vo voltage phasor, the Thevenin impedance that is RTH plus X uh, THJ and a load that is RL plus JXL. So we want to maximize the power delivered to the load from this circuit. This Thevenin equivalent may be a, a power a representation of a larger network. And uh, uh, to maximize uh, the power delivered, let's see what the equations say. So we just uh, calculate the voltage across the load. And we have power is again half of uh, the real part of uh, the voltage across it times the current conjugate. And uh, on solving and simplifying this expression, this the, uh, the this term is what we get. So for maximum, it is clear that uh, ZTH and should be equal to minus uh, x sorry XTH should be equal to minus XL and RL should be equal to RTH. The uh, XL equals minus XTH is what we call the conjugate matching. Uh, that means that the net impedance seen by the voltage source is zero. There is no, uh, I mean, the reactance. The net reactance is zero. Only resistance is seen by the load. And RTH is equal to RL, the same way we found for the previous case. This maximizes the power. And this maximum power turns out to be uh, half of uh, mod V squared by 4 RTH on an average, average power. So this uh, concludes the power analysis. Uh, some small topics left, uh, that is um, something about mutual inductors and three-phase systems. Uh, then see you in those videos. And I hope this is helping. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh, OK, and thank you for watching. See you there.